This is Daryl London, and you're watching Best Fan TV. I live alone, that's fine. I eat alone most of the time. Every night, I walk myself home. Hey, this is Narisha, and you're watching Best Fan TV. I'm here with Daryl London at Hugh's Room, and she's recently released her third album, so we're very excited about that. And uh, I was watching a video, and I saw you live on a Ferris wheel, so I think that's really cool. It's your latest <laughs> video, came out two weeks ago. Uh, I want to hear about that. Where did the idea come from, you know, trying to film live on a Ferris wheel? Uh, not something you see usually in a music video, so very cool concept. Was that something that you took part in? Yeah, thank you. Um, it was actually for my Pledge Music crowdfunding campaign for this album. So it was back in the summer and we just wanted to make some cool, fun content for all the people that were pledging and supporting the album. We didn't think they would let us on the fer Ferris wheel with the guitar and stuff like that, wow. but they just kind of weren't looking and we went on and, and it actually kind of worked. So it was really fun and I posted it because I felt like we all needed a throwback to the summer so we could remember what it feels like to be on a Ferris wheel in the summer. So. Uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun. Is this something you shot in the summer though, or is this something yeah. you shot now and made it look like it was, you know, no. shot in the summertime? It was at the CNE, okay. so yeah, we shot it in August. Okay. So right when summer was coming to close. Yeah, exactly. So I guess we could all use some summertime because it is winter, of course. We live in Canada. Uh, so what's coming up next? Uh, it seems like you've just released an album, so a tour must be coming up. Yeah, um, we're doing kind of one-off shows, mostly in Ontario in the spring and then kind of waiting to hear about festivals and that sort of thing in the summer and then hopefully in the fall hitting up more schools. So yeah, pretty pretty active touring, um, which is a big part of it, obviously. Now, in the past, I've spoken to a lot of people who tour or have seen or at least been a part of a tour across North America, and I've noticed the audience that is, I guess, on the east side is slightly different than the west. Have you ever noticed a difference? Um, I actually was recently touring in BC and I love Eastern Canada and they talk about the East Coast hospitality but I really found there's a lot of West Coast hospitality too. Um, so all across all across Canada really audiences, they, they can be a little bit different in the types of music they gravitate towards but generally um, I find Canadian audiences are amazing and yeah really warm and responsive. So you've had a chance, of course, to create your new albums, your third album. Uh, I want to hear the story behind it, and I want to hear what kind of went into putting this album together, and what really differentiates it from the past, you know, other two albums you've released prior to that. I'm so excited about this album. It is, um, I made it 100% on my own terms, and it really uh, reflects where I've been the past few years. Um, so the name is Tangerine and Blue, and that is the title track, which is basically, I sat down to write a love song, and I ended up writing a love song to all of the amazing supporters out there who have supported me in my career. So um, and this is specifically also to do with your pledge campaign. Exactly, yeah, that, that kind of made it come full circle, because these supporters, um, they really show up, you know, when I need them. And there are so many ups and downs in this business, and I just find that they're they're really there for me, especially when I'm questioning what I'm doing. Um, so that's a big theme on the album. I also write a fair bit about the ups and downs of the industry. Um, I write about industry relationships and different pressures. Um, and then, of course, there's the the songs about personal relationships and that kind of thing. Amazing. Now, where do you see yourself, you know, three years from now, uh, going viral? Is that it? <laughs> It's so tough to say because like I say, like this industry has so many twists and turns and ups and downs and um, I feel like as long as I, I'm making progress, then I'm going in the right direction and uh, I, I should keep going. But I'd love to perform more, tour more. Um, I've gotten into co-writing a lot more. For my first record, I didn't co-write at all and then a little more on my second, a little more on my third and I love writing with other artists for their projects as well. So. I'd love to see myself doing more of that, um, writing with different artists for their projects and writing in different genres, pop, country, all that kind of stuff. So, Who and what type of music are you a best fan of? I tend to, because I'm a singer-songwriter, so I tend to gravitate towards singer-songwriters and just really smart, clever songwriting. So uh, lately I love Lily Allen, I think she's brilliant. Um, and also, you know, I've always loved Ben Folds and Canadian artists like Serena Ryder and Joel Plaskett and yeah, just really good songwriting. Make sure you tune in to Best Fan for all your latest celebrity news and headlines. This is Narisha signing out from Best Fan TV.
hold it tight And I say that I'm fine As I pray that I'll be fine If you asked me to take